When I click this button, you'll see something really cool that I did. Hey guys, I'm Nabu to Pro Beats and today I have something different for you. I want to talk to you about the visual aspect of mixing and how you can make your mixing environment, your DAW, in my case Studio One, more appealing and I want to show you a few cool tricks that can help you with that. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and hit the like button, let's get into it. First I want to show you my visual appearance settings inside Studio One and I want to explain why I have them like that. To change the appearance of Studio One you have to go to Studio One option, you need to go to general appearance and from here you can change how Studio One looks. You can change the hue shift, increase the saturation. If you want to have Studio One really colorful, I find that with strong saturation my eyes get really tired really fast. That's why I like to keep the saturation somewhere around here. Then you can control how bright or dark Studio One is. With the new version of Studio One you can make it white. It looks similar to version 1 and 2. I really don't like how it looks on my monitor. I find it a bit confusing more towards the dark side. With the contrast you can change how bright the text is, you can see it in the mixer and in the arrangement view. I like it pretty high. I want the text to pop out because I really want to see really fast what I'm working on. Then we have the arrangement section where you can change the background. I really don't like it really dark or really white. And with the contrast you can change how bright the grid is. For mixing you can keep it at low. This is my 2020 preset. This is how I like things. From here you can hit apply okay and you are good to go. So this is how I like Studio One to look. This is my personal uh, preference. You can change things, you can make it bright, dark, just adjust the settings so you can work long hours without any eye fatigue. That's why I think this is a really powerful trick that you can use to improve your workflow because you can work more without getting tired. The next important setting for me is the event appearance. You can find it under options, advanced event appearance. One of the new cool things in Studio One is the smooth waveform. Before we had it something like this, which is pretty bad if you are zooming in. It gets pretty tiresome when you're looking to waveforms, especially when you're editing. So I highly recommend enabling the smooth waveforms. Another really cool feature is that you can hide the events. This is really helpful when you have a really big session and you need the tracks to be really small. You can see how the event names is really distracting. This is with it. We have it on each and every single event in the arrangement. If we disable it, we have a much cleaner look that I prefer sometimes, especially after doing all my edits. Another feature is to make the events translucent. That means you can see the grid lines behind the events. I really don't care for that that much. And that's it for the event appearance settings. I have one more important setting and that's the colorized channel strip. As you can see, I don't have it enabled because I think that Studio One doesn't have the best colors. With the option enable, it looks like this. It's really not my cup of tea. I got used to it. It's not something that I really miss. So this is how I have the settings for the appearance of Studio One. I really like how it looks. I really hope that with future versions, Studio One will be improved when it comes to appearance and visuals. Now I want to talk to you about another really, really important part of your workflow and that's the browser. As you can see, when you have a lot of plugins, things can get pretty hectic, especially when you have mono version, stereo version, mono to stereo. The first small thing that you can do that will have a really big impact is to hide the plugins you're not using. For example, I rarely use mono versions of plugins. Just go to the wrench and you can just hide the plugins you're not using. Now I have cleaned up my entire list and as you can see with the full waves bundle you have a lot of plugins that maybe you're not using like the mono versions, like the mono to stereo versions, like some plugins that you really don't want to use. You just need to hide them so you can find the rest of the plugins, the ones that you use the most really fast. So this is before the cleaning, a lot of things. If we click the wrench again 
you can see that now the list is manageable this is a really small thing but it has a really big impact when you're working with a lot of plugins as you can see i have the same thing done for the fab filter plugins and other plugins that i use most of the time another thing that you can do with the browser is to set favorites and that will help you find the plugins you use the most really fast with the favorite folder let's say that i want to add to favorites the bx console ssl 4000e you can hide the versions that you're not using for example i know that i prefer using vst three versions so i can just hide the rest of the versions just like that let's add spiff to favorites if you go to favorites you will see your list there the last thing that i want to show you is how you can use thumbnails for your plugins inside the browser this is the regular view where you can see the name of the plugins when i click this button you'll see something really cool that i did this is just an idea that you can implement yourself you can tag individual plugins with a thumbnail like this and i really think that this is a really cool way to use thumbnails because you're using colors for example you can set all the compressors with uh, blue you can set all the eqs with red you can add small icons like i did here now let me show you the process of creating a thumbnail like this let's say that we want to make a thumbnail like this for Fab Filter Pro MB. Just open it up, update thumbnail from here, and now you have this in the browser. But you want to have something different. How can we do this? You can use Paint, you can use Photoshop. In my case, I'm using Photoshop, and I have already a project opened for the saturation icon. You can purchase icons like this online really cheap. And let's say that for the multi band, I want headphones just like this let's delete the other one let's rename it multi band you can choose the font you want you can change the color and just like that we have our icon just save it as a png file and now i'll show you the process of replacing the thumbnail that we have now with the one i've created you need to go to options locations you can see where you have your user data go to that folder inside that folder you will find another folder called snapshots fab filter and here we have all the snapshots from this point what you need to do is to replace this files with the one we've created you can do this really easy if i restart studio one we'll have our thumbnail and now we have the multiband icon inside the browser you can use it just sometimes you can get really creative with it color code it add icons you can add anything you want you can make just the icon without any name so yeah these are a few visual things that you can do to improve your workflow i hope that you enjoyed this video if you did please subscribe hit that like button don't forget to follow me on instagram see you guys really really soon Cheers!